As you can see on the screen, I'm going to talk about the benefits of boredom. I'm sure you've been bored. I'm sure you've had your kids tell you they're bored. I'm sure you've been in a a meeting or at school or in a lecture or sitting, listening to someone who's just super boring. We all, we've all experienced it and boring does have benefits. Okay, so we're going to talk about these now. So benef- boredom is basically that pesky feeling that occurs when we lose interest in our surroundings or what people are saying or the activities or in the relationship or in the conversation or the TV show. It's common. It can be associated with laziness, but generally it's more likely a natural response to lack of mental stimulation. So I mean, just think of that boring person who's going on and on and on. It's just not stimulating you mentally. So your brain just doesn't want to put the, you know, your brain, your mind, brain, body connection doesn't want to exert the energy to pay attention to that. Or the movie is not interesting enough or the book's not interesting enough. Or so generally there's a lack of meaning It's a natural response to lack of mental stimulation. We like to be mentally stimulated because we're intelligent. We 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 want to get something out of something. We want that mental mental stimulation. So it's in a sense kind of almost like a protective mechanism to protect us from putting our energy where we shouldn't put our energy. And it's a signal that what we're doing right now is not meeting that need of that mental stimulation. So because we have limited physical energy in our brain and our body and our conscious mind, but unlimited energy in our non-conscious mind, our non-conscious mind will guide our conscious mind and our brain and send us signals and our body and our heart. So all the physical send us signals to tell us that we are something, we must pay attention to something. And boredom is one of those signals. It's a response. It's a behavioral response. It's one of the four signals. It's, it's a, it's a, it falls under the behavioral response signal. And it's telling us something. Very much like pain in your body tells you something. Like if you're constantly getting headaches, there's something going on. If you're constantly getting gut ache, there's something going on. When we have, if we burn ourselves, we get that pain. So in other words, like pain is a signal. Boredom is a behavioral signal that's telling us something. And it's pretty much always related to some sort of lack of stimulation, lack of mental stimulation. So boredom can also happen if you feel you you don't have any control over a situation. It could be an academic situation. It could be at at school and there's something that your child's listening to and they, like they've just got to sit there listening and they feel that they have no control and they don't maybe don't understand something and they can't ask a question or it's just not interesting. Doing that, it's not giving them that mental stimulation, but they feel like they can't control that or you're in a meeting that you just have to sit in and you have no control because you just have to sit in that meeting and you so it's very hard to fully engage because the feeling of not having any level of control we always like to have a level of autonomy makes you disengage it but you don't feel fully engaged and then that can lead to boredom and it can you can feel disconnected to what you have to do or what you have to listen to or how you have to respond the other thing that can lead to boredom which is interesting is expectations from societal pressure so we get this pressure in society to to that can lead to a mismatch between what you want to do that is in accordance with your values and your principles or what you like to do and what you are having to do. So there's a disconnect. So expectations like having to have a certain type of job or being told you need to study this particular thing in order to have a job in the future, but that's not what you're interested in. I've had so many of my patients over the years that they said that you know, their mom and dad and parents said, that, listen, you've got to go and become an engineer or a doctor or a teacher or whatever to make sure that you have a good job and you can't just go and study music because how are you going to get a job for music? So you end up, you can get bored because you study, you are spending a lot of your time on things that are mismatched between what you expect, what you need for you, what your value system is uh, versus what you are doing. Sometimes you have to take a job just to make money, which is happens. And so sometimes we do get bored and it's a season in our life. And obviously, sometimes there's just no option. We have to be in a job and that's the only job you can get. And so one has to find a way of getting around that to find meaning in other areas and to get your mindset into a state of acceptance. But if you can change jobs, if you are doing a job that you don't love and it is possible for you to find something else and then transition over, it's really important because it can lead to boredom, as we've, I'm sure you've, you know, all of us have had that experience. But basically, boredom is ubiquitous. We all experience it. It's totally normal. And 
it's actually interesting because it's so normal. As you see, as you see, it can come from mental lack of mental stimulation, expectations not being met, a disconnect between who you are and what you're doing, losing feeling a losing the feeling of control so it's ubiquitous it's all over we all experience it sometimes quite frequently yet it's only recently that it's actually been studied and you may have heard that there has been you may have heard because there's been quite a lot i've noticed in the media of people saying that boredom can lead to increased creativity we'll talk about that in a minute let's just have a look at a couple of these a couple of the research studies that have been done so james dankert who's a cognitive scientist at the university of waterloo he says that boredom is analogous, analogous, analogous sorry, to pain because like pain tells us something, boredom is telling you that what you are doing now is not working. So that's similar to what I said earlier on, that boredom. So there's actual science confirming that boredom is a signal like something like pain telling you that what you are doing at this moment is not working. So it could be that disconnect. It could be that you're doing something that someone else is expecting you to do, but it doesn't align with what you want to do, like the job situation or studying something or in a classroom environment, or in a conversation, or you've been dragged to some meeting that you're sitting there and you've been told you have to do and you just have to sit there and it's boring or doesn't, what you're hearing doesn't align with your value system. So we need to listen because it's a signal. It's telling us something. And when we have a signal, the whole point is that it's your non-conscious mind telling you, hey, this is not good for you. There's something here that's not right. You've got to fix it. Er Erin Westgate, who's a social psychologist at Florida State University, says that boredom is telling us that what you're doing is not a good fit for the mental and emotional resources you have at the moment and can lead to anxiety. So James Dankert is telling us that it's a signal. And then Erin Westgate, Westgate is saying that it's actually your body, your unconscious mind, your, not just your, your unconscious mind, your mind-brain body network together, telling you that what you're doing right now is draining the mental resources you have that you need to put somewhere else so it's like a war also in, in a sense that warning signal but it's telling us that you you draining your, your energy is going in the wrong place at this moment what what you are doing is not good for you and that's why you're bored because this is not where you should be putting your energy at this moment which is very interesting so what you're doing is not a good fit for you so it's a it's not a, it's that disconnect thing that us that i spoke about on the previous slide that there's this disconnect between what you're doing and your value systems and what you like. And boredom is telling you that there's this disconnect. And that, and when there's a disconnect, it's draining those mental resources. It's draining. It's going to have a negative impact on your emotions, which is actually all very interesting. So here's a couple of exercises that you can do based on what I've said so far, just to start helping you to recognize. Now, you've heard me talk a lot about the multiple perspective advantage. The multiple perspective advantage is something that you can that you can do all the time for everything literally that I teach because it is basically your ability to stand back and observe yourself and observe yourself in various different situations. So in this situation, you're observing yourself being bored. You're observing yourself recognizing that boredom is the signal that's coming up. So it's telling you something. It's a signal telling you something. Either there's a disconnect, you're feeling a, dis a lack of control, there's expectations not being met, there's something's not right that you need to change. So getting into that state where you sit back and you observe yourself, you can ask yourself this question. Say this to yourself. So like pain is telling me that something is wrong. So if I have this constant pain in my neck or something or a headache, I need, this is telling me something. So like pain, I'm bored at the moment and this boredom I'm experiencing is telling me that what I'm doing right now isn't working. Okay? So you say that phrase, and then you ask yourself, what is not working? And then you describe in detail why you bored. What is, what, why are you bored? I'm bored because I'm listening to this lecture that is just something I'm just not interested in. I can't really focus. I can't engage. It's making me tired. It's something that I really don't value. Is this, and so, be descriptive. Don't don't be shy. Get all of it down. Because the more you dig, the more you're going to get coming out of your non-conscious. You're digging out the reasons from your non-conscious and your non-conscious has the answers. You have the answers inside of you. And if we acknowledge through the stand back, observe ourselves and bring it up and ask ourselves and answer ourselves and write it down, ask, answer, and then discuss. Now ask yourself and discuss with yourself, okay, well, what else can I do instead? 
I have to finish this lecture, but is there a way of me getting changing courses? If there isn't a way of me changing courses, can I maybe go, because I've got to get this course in order to get this part of my degree, then is there some extra support that I can go to get to help me to understand this better? Is there a context I can create that can help me apply this? Maybe there's a way of applying this. So maybe if it's, I'll give a really simple example. Maybe it's a child in class learning fractions and they're really, really battling and they're getting bored and the teacher keeps telling you that your child is just switching off and seems really bored. And if they don't focus, they're not going to be able to learn how to do fractions. And then maybe what you as a parent can do is say, okay, well, you have to learn fractions. Yes, it's making you bored. You don't like that. And it's now affecting other areas of math. And it's math and it's probably coming from maybe that you're not sure fully understanding it. So maybe let's find something that you do like. Now, maybe this particular child loves to bake. So then you could then use the concept of fractions in in doing getting all the preparation and all the ingredients and how much of the ingredients you could then teach fractions using something that's contextualized, that's meaningful. So the meaningless element is removed and you brought meaning back into it. Okay, so this exercise, get into the multiple perspective advantage. Give yourself the statements like pain, this boredom's telling me something. What is it? What is not working about what I am doing at the moment? Describe in detail, write it down. Now ask yourself, what can I do instead? He has another little exercise. The first exercise, as you can see, is what is not working. Something's not working. So this is finding you bored because something's not working. The second one is it's not a good fit. Okay. So what you're doing now, so it's once again, get into the multiple perspective advantage and then you're saying to yourself, okay, what I'm doing now isn't a good fit for the emotional and mental resources I have right now. So I'm doing this, I'm bored. So, and you can ask, you can either say it as a statement or you can say, okay, I'm bored. Is it because of the previous one? This is not working. So you can go through that and it could be that. And then you could say, but I'm still bored. Or that, this exercise one didn't help, then you can do exercise number two. So you can do either exercise or you can do both. Okay. So you can say, well, it's not working. Maybe it's just not a good fit for the what I have mentally available at the moment. So maybe you're going through something in a relationship, at home, something's happening in your life, something's happening at work, something's happening in your finances. So your energy is going into that. And this thing that you have to do isn't a good fit for where you are at that moment. So that could be that. So this is the fit thing. Is it fitting into where my life? Do I need to put, can I re-engage in this later when I've sorted this out? You need to, so this is where it comes to set to, to the second part where you can ask yourself some questions. Is the task too easy? Is it too hard? What can I do instead? Is this something that I can put off to do later? I don't have that question done. I'm just adding these questions on just to, those would just trigger questions to get you going or similar, you know, sort of catalysts to get you going. Is it the fact that it's not personally meaningful? How can I make it more meaningful? And so this is why it's not fitting. So the first one, let me just make sure you understand, something's not working. And so what can you do instead? So what I'm doing here is not working. What can I do instead? And then I gave that context of the fractions and baking. And then this one, it's not a good fit for where I am at the moment. So this activity is maybe, maybe this, because I'm emotionally drained, this particular activity of doing this particular project right now is not working. It's making me bored. This is something I could engage in later, but I don't have the right kind of mental capacity at the moment to do this. So let me see if I can put this off till later today or tomorrow or next week and then do something else that's not as difficult. So that could be a simple project. You know, that could be a project at, that you're doing at work. It could be in, in a relationship. Maybe you're trying to solve something in a relationship and maybe there's some level of conflict, but it's just not working and you feel bored in trying to resolve it, it doesn't mean that that's a bad bad thing. It's telling you you don't have the capacity at the moment. So what do you have the capacity to do? Maybe something much more simple. Maybe something like, I'll just practice being kind. I did a whole NeuroLive podcast on being kind. Go listen to that. I give lots of tips there. And then it's like, I'll come back to this at a later stage. So it's not a good fit at the moment. 